Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 7TV Fantasy Behind the Scenes series. Uh, my name is Eddie Price. I hope you're all doing really well today, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be diving into uh, a brand new attack called Presence Attacks, which is inclusive to 7TV Fantasy. And I am joined in the company of the wonderful Kyle Periton, the director of Crooked Dice and lead gay designer of 7TV Fantasy. Uh, Thanks for joining, Carl. How are you tonight? I'm fine, thank you, Eddie. Yeah, you've been all right? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, and uh, our other guest, a uh, second year student of Edgeville University and a two year designer on 7TV Fantasy, the brilliant Dan Cliff. Dan, how are you doing tonight? Thanks for joining. I'm doing all right. Um, I'm excited to pretend I know about game design. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, right. Well, let's just, you know, go straight into it, Carl. We have this brand new uh, attack called Presence Attack. People might be thinking, you know, a, a new attack for 7TV. Like, can, you, can you just sort of tell us what is, or what, you know, what is present, a Presence Attack? Presence Attacks have been around for a very, very long while. Uh, it was something that I think I'm going to credit to uh, a guy called Mr. Simon English. When we did the 7TV um, back in the day, it was an RPG. It was based on a system that we'd, uh, that we'd established there. And we had presence attacks, and they were a kind of a force of will, um, or something which wasn't a, a kind of a physical interaction in there. So it could be a, a shout or a, an icy glare, or um, something. So it, it, it was trying to like gamify like an aura, or that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. uh, that more of, to do with the senses rather than um, and uh, brains rather than the brawn, really. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to introduce those into fantasy because they just add so much tone to, to what we've got to do. And 7TV is great, but it's also quite broad in what it does. So we always look for places where we can get the tone into the profile cards um, or any of the, uh, the special effects. So this was another opportunity to do that. Um, and on a mechanical level, when we were doing pulp, we also wanted to make sure that Every profile, when you've got an action, you can actually do something. There's nothing duller than, you know, activating and realising you've got two actions and can only really use one of them. So we were trying to make each activation and when you can do something to be as kind of fun as it, as it could be. Um, so introducing another type of attack kind of allowed us to address that um, as well. Okay. Brilliant. And, you know, Dan, when you sort of like heard about presence attacks, did you have any sort of influence on the, the design for those, especially in certain profiles? Did you have fun sort of looking into different profiles and having that kind of extra ability to say, right, okay, this guy sort of appears like this. Maybe we could try and get that, that flavor. Yeah, I think, like, I think I kind of went, <laughs> went pretty ham on them on my profiles. I was like, oh, every profile can have a presence attack. There's just, there's just so much yeah. you can do with them. Like, if you're making, say, a, I don't know, a peasant or uh, a sort of monk or a cleric, they're probably not going to do too much kind of direct combat. The peasant's not going to pull out swords up, just like destroying people. But then you can give him some sort of fun presence attack, like, I don't know, maybe a sort of get off my land, angry grovel thing. Or just every model can have some sort of interesting, fun sort of, I guess, battle cry or withering stare or what have you that allows you to have models that maybe aren't all kind of knights that you kind of have like oh you have like a scholar who has some fun, interesting attacks that they can do yeah so it brings about like a, a new sort of dimension to the battlefield um with these sort of like you know presence attacks and i suppose it's like quite a lot of like utility and a kind of like an extra layer that sort of the players sort of have to you know sort of work with um so why do we sort of feel the need to sort of implement the the presence attacks is there was there something sort of missing that we felt like okay this you know needs to happen was there okay, something that was that was happening on the board that we just instinctively knew i think there's kind of two good um kind of reasons that we had the first was that like i said before fantasy has a lot of different types of kind of profiles characters um and a lot of them are all sort of people with swords or guns and things and they need ways to be able to interact with other models like applying statuses maybe dealing damage that isn't just i have a sword i'm gonna stab you like again like sort of a priest is can have some sort of holy chant 
which isn't an attack in the old traditional sense, but is because of presence attacks, they can interact with other models. Um, it just allows for more, a wider range of kind of archetypes to be able to be in fantasy. And um, also, I think, unlike pulp, where lots of models have ranged weapons, there's quite a lot of guns and things like that, fantasy has a lot less. There's archers and there's spellcasters, and that's kind of it. Yeah. And most people just have melee weapons. But that means that at the start of the game, models are kind of just moving and moving and moving, and it would take a long time for them to get into combat. Whereas giving models ranged presence attacks allows them to be useful sooner, which then just means that you're going to be having more fun in your games because you're not spending six or seven turns just moving models, which probably is not going to be great. But then having these options to be able to do ranged attacks on models that they're not going to bow, they're not going to go and bow, they can, they sure can yell very loud and make someone scared. <laughs> and I just think it adds more kind of, I guess, decisions to basically any point in the game. I mean, I'll, I'll put you on the spot a little bit here, Carl, but could you sort of like give us like an example of, of, a, of a presence attack? So, you know, I have a, like a setup, like a little battle on where they could be useful. Yeah, a lot of the time, presence attacks are quite good for kind of softening up the enemy. It necessitated us kind of also creating a new status for them, which was distracted. We sat there for quite a while trying to think of kind of what was the kind of the epitome of um, the, the kind of the outcome that we that we wanted to, to get, um, and again, as ever, the name for it. Uh, but distracted is quite good just to kind of soften enemies up, so you can have someone yelling from the back. So we've got, I think probably my favourite might be the greedy governor, um, who has got a shocking wig, which is his presence attack um, in there. So sometimes there's a bit of you know, humour to be had to uh, dropping them in. But we've got the seasoned veteran has got war stories. Uh, our halfling has got, I think, a cherubic smile uh, in there. Our demonic fiend has got an abyssal roar. So when we we were designing those as well, we tried to kind of think of, well, how did that really come, What how did that manifest on the tabletop in there? So we kind of found that roars um, were kind of either a cone or kind of a, had a slightly longer range on them. Um, some of them, if they were, you know, a scent or something, or the, or the, the wig uh, in there is just sort of an area effect. So we could kind of build weapon effects on the back of them as well, depending on kind of how they how they interacted or kind of manifested to, to themselves. Um, so in a battle, yeah, I think the, the, the I think the peasants are quite good. They, they have got something like get off my land or something along those lines, where it just it just it allows you to. Um, kind of uh, affect the uh, affect the battle where you haven't. Seventeen means never been about who's got the biggest gun. Really, it's about kind yeah. of having fun and having Tony there, and it really allows us to do something a little bit a, a little bit different and have some and have some fun with them. I think. Really, I mean, so when we sort of uh, completed Seventeen V and we, we we you know we got this draft and we got all these you know presence attacks, we we you know we put them to the playtesters. And do you have any sort of like feedback from the playtesters? How did they you know respond? to the, the presence of Dax. Yeah, it, it was wholly positive. It, was, it did exactly what we wanted to do. Um, they all said it added a, an extra kind of dimension to uh, to combat in there, and they were a lot of fun, and it really felt like there was an extra tone added to the character that they kind of kind of realised they were missing, <laughs> uh, in some cases, some of the, the earlier profiles. Um, so... I'm hoping that people are going to enjoy them, but certainly the places they did. I'm sure they will. And, uh, you know, but I think if people, you know, do really take to these new sort of presence attacks, do you reckon they'll feature in the future of 7TV? Do you reckon you'll, you'll always look to try and get these in just because of what they, they bring? Yeah, they've added so much that we'll, we'll definitely include them in the feature packs um, that we're, we're writing. We put them in the Lurkers from the Deep. We included them in there in kind of bulk because they're, they're quite easy to kind of bolt into to existing profiles. Yeah. Um, and I think if we go back and, and ever kind of reissue previous sets, I think it's definitely something that I would I would want to do. All right. So you're going to look at maybe even going back to the, the sort of the older seventy you know stuff and looking to add. I think we could do. I think they they add so much that it seems it seems daft not to try and include them in. You know, you've got the Reval Mastermind and your flamboyant agent have all got really tropish kind of packs that we could, I would love to play about with. So. Yeah. 
Brilliant. Uh, Dan, do you have any, just before we sort of wrap the, the end of the episode, do you have any like particular presence attacks in mind that you just really want to put it on the table and have a, have a go with? Um, I can't actually even if I can remember any very specific ones, but honestly, all of them. I just, yeah. I think like from a design perspective, I love making them because yeah. you could do some cool stuff like, oh, you've got the Death Knight, maybe he's got some sort of like, unearthly visage or whatever like spooky thing but then also it's just fun you can kind of be silly with them like Carl was saying there's a lot of uh, room for jokes or little silly gags that I just yeah. think are really fun um, yeah. and yeah but the uh, the big bad wolf has got the wolfish charm obviously you know <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but it was, uh, it was fun to do I mean, we're, we're probably going to do like an episode uh, a bit later on in the series about the magic system, and I know like a lot of people are excited about the magic system, so no doubt, you know, one of you two or both of you could come on for that episode. Um, but in terms of present attacks, they're, they're kind of like, you know, similar in the sense that they're adding like a new way to sort of explore and have some sort of chaos on the table, which is, you know, which is really good. So I'm, you know, I'm happy about it, and I think, uh, you know, a lot of viewers will be excited about sort of trying you know, these uh, these new presence attacks. Uh, well, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Dan, for coming on and talking about it. Uh, unless you two have got anything else to add. Hello, no. and thank you for having us. Um, and yeah, just presence attacks. Pretty great, I would say, as an addition. <laughs> As an endorsement for you. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Well, thanks, guys, and uh, thank you to the viewers. Uh, again, if you've got any questions, just pop them down in the comments on the video. We'll uh, we'll try and get back to you. But for now, that's it for us. Thank you.